the nucleus is basically a collection of two kinds of particles protons and neutrons and these protons and neutrons are basically a kind of particles which have spin half that means they have an intrinsic spin angular momentum of their own so you can think of the nucleus as a collection of smaller nuclear particles which have their own intrinsic spin angular momentum also, in certain kinds of nuclear models, it is assumed that the potential inside a nucleus is a central potential field. That means the solution of the Schrodinger's equation in the case of a central potential should also lead to orbital angular momentum of these constituent particles. So as you can see, the nucleus is a collection of smaller particles. These smaller particles have spin angular momenta as well as orbital angular momentum of their own. This contributes towards the overall angular momenta of the the nucleus itself. So the nucleus itself behaves as a singular particle which has a spin angular momentum of its own which is basically the result of the summation of all the orbital angular momenta of the individual constituent particles as well as the summation of all the spin angular momenta of the individual constituent particles. So therefore we can say that the total angular momenta of any given nucleus is a vector sum of the orbital angular momentum of the constituent particles as the spin angular momentum of the constituent particles. So L here simply refers to the orbital angular momenta of all the constituent particles inside the nucleus and S refers to the spin angular momenta of all the constituent particles. So L is nothing but the summation of all individual angular momenta of all the particles and S refers to the summation of all the spin angular momenta of all individual particles. Now in quantum systems, angular momentum is a kind of a physical quantity which experiences quantization not only with respect to its magnitude but also with respect to its direction. Now I have made a previous video where I discuss what quantization of angular momentum really is. In that video, I discussed the case of an electron moving around the nucleus and how the electron has two kinds of angular momenta associated with its motion, orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. And in both these two cases, the angular momenta has quantization of magnitude as well as quantization of direction. Now, if you're not familiar with quantization of angular momentum, then you should check out that video because I discussed the idea of quantization of any given quantum particle extensively in that particular video. Now, it just so happens that the total angular momenta of a nucleus also shows quantization, not only its magnitude, but also in its direction. So the nucleus basically behaves as a singular particle, just like neutrons, protons, or electrons. The nucleus behaves as a singular particle whose total angular momentum shows quantization with its magnitude and also in its direction. The magnitude quantization of any given nucleus is given as root over i i plus 1 h cross. So the magnitude of the uh, ang total spin angular momentum of any given nucleus is given as root over i i plus 1 h cross. Here i is basically a quantum number that can take values of 0, it can take values of half, 1, 3 by 2 and on and on. This is sometimes also sometimes referred to as nuclear spin. So this expression basically gives you the quantization of the nuclear uh, angular momentum magnitude. Also, the direction in which this angular momentum is oriented in space is also quantized and its rule is basically given by the z component of the angular momentum with respect to some kind of a z axis is basically equal to m h cross where m is basically equal to minus i minus i minus 1 up to i minus 1 and i. So basically m can take 2i plus 1 values from minus i to plus i with a difference of plus minus 1. Now before I talk about in what kind of circumstances the nucleus spin can have values of 0, half, 1 and 3 by 2, let's first look at these uh, space quantization of a given nucleus. So let's take the example of i is equal to 3 by 2. So for the case of i is equal to 3 by 2, m can take values of minus 3 by 2, minus half, half and 3 by 2. So there are four possible values of, values of m and uh, the z component of the angular momenta along a z axis can also have four different values, minus 3 by 2 h cross, minus half h cross, half h cross and 3 by 2 h cross. The way this can be visualized uh, or the way this kind of a motion is represented in three dimensional space is given by this particular diagram. So this is what you have the z axis and these are basically the z 
infinite components of the angular momenta of the nucleus. So this represents the 3 by 2 h cross value, this represents the half h cross value, this represents the minus half h cross value and this represents minus 3 by 2 h cross value. So along the z axis these are the z components of the angular momenta. So basically what is happening is that if the nucleus is uh, uh, or uh, rotating or it has a certain kind of a spin in a given direction then the angular momenta is oriented in a certain direction in space such that its z component is any one of these values so for the first case for the 3 by 2 h cross value the nucleus has a certain angular momenta in a particular direction so that its z value or z component is 3 by 2 h cross now in three dimensional space this basically leads to the possibility of the orientation of the nuclear uh, spin to be along a particular conical section. So if the nucleus precesses around the z-axis along this conical section then all of these different directions will basically result in a z component which is 3 by 2 h cross. So for the case of 3 by 2 h cross the nucleus is basically precessing around the z-axis so that the z component of the angular momenta gives you a value of 3 by 2 h cross. Similarly for the case of half h cross the nuclear uh, spin is precessing around a particular conical section for the case of uh, half, minus half h cross the nuclear uh, spin is precessing around another particular conic section and the, for the case of minus 3 by 2 h cross the nuclear uh, uh, spin is precessing around, around any uh, some other kind of a conical section. So as you can see here these basically quantization rules for the uh, direction of the angular momenta basically leads to these restricted conic sections where these allowed values of the z component represents certain conic sections in which the nuclear spin can precess in that particular conic section with respect to the z axis. In all these four cases, the total magnitude of the angular momenta is the same. It is only the z component of the angular momenta which is quantized according to this particular expression. Now the direction in which a particular nuclear spin is restricted to or the magnitude that a particular nucleus has is basically determined by this particular quantum number i which is also known as nuclear spin. Now what should be the value of nuclear spin for a given nucleus? We can determine the value of a nuclear spin quite easily for the ground state configuration of a given nucleus by looking at how many number of protons and how many number of neutrons the nucleus possesses. So in the case of even even nuclei which basically have an even number of neutrons and an even number of protons it is generally seen that these even number of protons they pair up with each other and the even number of neutrons they pair up with each other and then end up cancelling each other's spin and orbital angular momentum. This effect is known as pairing effect. So what happens in the case of the pairing effect is that neutrons will pair up with other opposite spin neutrons and cancel each other's spin and angular momenta and protons will pair up with opposite spin protons and cancel each other's spin and uh, orbital angular momenta. This leads to a situation in which the even even nuclei which are even number of protons and even number of neutrons they will pair up with each other to cancel each other's spin and orbital angular momenta so the final uh, nuclear spin of the entire nucleus for the even even case basically comes out to be zero. So therefore for the case of even even nuclei uh, for example for helium, for carbon, for cadmium the nuclear spin comes out to be zero and the total nuclear angular momentum also therefore comes out to be zero. So what happens in the case of even odd nuclei so these are nuclei basically which have even number of neutrons and odd number of protons or even number of protons and odd number of neutrons. So what happens is that the same kind of pairing effect large number of protons and large number of neutrons will try to pair up with each other to cancel each other's spin and or orbital angular momenta thereby leaving only one unpaired either neutron or a proton. That particular unpaired neutron or proton will contribute towards the spin of the entire nuclear system. So basically what is happening is that all the neutrons and protons existing inside the nucleus they, are, they try to pair up with each other and they form a certain kind of a central core in which the core itself has zero angular momenta. The unpaired neutron or proton which exists outside the core but inside the nucleus contributes towards the overall spin angular momenta of the nucleus. So the spin nucleus spin comes out to be half and it has a corresponding nuclear angular momentum. 
Lastly, we have the odd odd nuclei which basically have an odd number of neutrons and odd number of protons. In these cases, you have the large number of protons and neutrons again pairing up to cancel each other's spin and orbital angular momenta. But there is an unpaired neutron and an unpaired proton also present in this case, which therefore contributes towards the overall spin of the entire nucleus. And in this case, the nuclear spin has a value of 1. So as you can see, pairing effect plays a very important role in determining what is the nuclear spin and the nuclear angular momenta of any given nucleus of an element. Vast majority of the protons and neutrons, they try to cancel each other's spin by pairing with each other and then forming a core inside the nucleus, which basically has zero angular momenta. And the unpaired neutron or proton which exists outside this core, but inside the nucleus, they end up contributing towards the spin and the overall spin angular momenta of the given nucleus. This is all as far as nuclear spin and angular momenta is concerned. Uh, that's it for today's video and uh, see you in the next one.